Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. All across Britain, people are keeping a shocking secret. This was my study. And their numbers are growing. This is what it feels like inside my head. Over a million people are now living amongst mountains of clutter and rubbish. What's in here? There's probably a couple of dead rats in there, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's a functionable kitchen. And when a horde takes over... Please leave me alone! No, oh, I can't cope. ..it can affect everyone who lies in its path. I don't know how you can live like this. It's just crazy. Yeah, you are like terrific. <laughs> Psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis wow. has treated hundreds of hoarders over the last 17 years. What do you do with the food that's out of date? Eat it. It's dangerous. <laughs> Compulsive hoarding does not discriminate. It can happen to anyone. I'm king of the mountain of newspapers. Together with a team of professional declutterers... We leave no stone unturned. Stelios believes he can help kickstart the process of decluttering their homes. Very difficult for her. You can see the attachment. I want to change so much. You know, this has become your armour, so nobody can hurt you again. But well, we're going to change that. And it's not just hoarding that can be a problem. The Disney collecting will never stop until she's in the ground. When a collection's so big it starts to impact on your home... I think now's the time that he needs to stop because we're running out of room. Stop. Yes, stop. stop collecting. Then it's time to get practical help. Tonight, Stelios meets Alex, his most extreme hoarder yet. Oh, it's taken about 10 years to make this mess. And Lawrence. My house is probably more like a museum than an actual house. Whose collection of bird ornaments is making his home a very cramped place to live. Six-year-old Alex is one of Britain's biggest hoarders. His clutter has overwhelmed his garage, his study, a barn, shipping containers, and even his car. But Alex's five-bedroom house isn't your typical hoarder's home. Wife Jackie has managed to hold most of the clutter at bay since her husband began compulsively hoarding 15 years ago. Uh, Jackie wasn't sort of keeping control, I'm afraid my hoarding would just take over. Jackie now has to compete for her husband's attention with mountains of clutter and rubbish. After 40 years of marriage, Alex and Jackie are living separate lives. When we got married, which was a long time ago, I didn't envisage it turning out like this. I didn't realise that this collecting would turn into hoarding. What began with an interest in antiques and memorabilia has degenerated into an unhealthy obsession. My dad can't control the hoarding at all. It, it, it controls him. It sort of progressed, really, from collecting quite good things like prints and artwork, um, which he used to deal a bit, to then just not being able to really part with it. And then really this last five or six years where he's sort of getting empty cans, yoghurt pots, you know, just a absolute rubbish. And, not not and washed bags. out, I might yeah, have occasionally. Keeping them. <laughs> Since he retired, Alex has increasingly devoted his spare time and spare cash to his hoard. Born into an affluent family, for much of Alex's life, money was no object. I've had my comfort in spending some of it. He indulged passions for cars and expensive cameras and was a well-known photographer on the international golf circuit. But today, the jet setting's a thing of the past. Alex's inheritance has been frittered away on his colossal hoard. Money just seems to go nowhere these days. I think I need some trees in the back garden that I can actually grow it on. Today, Alex spends the money he has left on videos, stationery, DVDs and newspapers. I feel I'm a bit of a sponge for information. 
newspapers. Gee whiz. I think excluding any magazine. Good morning, approaching 20 a day. And that equates to something like £3,500 a year. Daughter Julie Ann has become increasingly concerned about the consequences for her parents. Because he can't prioritise things, I worry about him financially. I have worried that they're not going to have a house. He's in his own little hell that he's made. It's a very stressful existence. And, and juggling balls, trying to hold this up and that, and they keep dropping behind my back, and you get quite down on yourself. He just can't think rationally at all. As Alex's problems deepen, the family is losing patience. None of us can speak to him. If we try and say anything, he'll either just look blankly at you and walk off, or he'll get really quite angry. I keep getting told off by them about it and the spend and the arguments. No, I don't understand why he can't just snap out of it and just live a normal life. I, I, I can't comprehend that at all. Alex's family have asked for help from psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis, a leading expert in the treatment of hoarding disorder. In just six weeks, he believes he can help hoarders modify their behaviour. I'm here today to see Alex, who I know is an extreme hoarder. And uh, what well, I'm thankful that he's allowing me to come in today and see him and assess him. But in my experience, I know with compulsive hoarders who are chronic, it is very difficult to treat them. So I'm hoping today is an exception and uh, that we can move forward. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Alex. Hello. So which room are you going to show me first? The study. I've cleared all this so you could just at least get in here. Wow. Yes, this is the oh study. I'm speechless. Over 15 years, the room has become a dumping ground. And I can stand. What do you feel when you enter this room? Uh, I feel a bit devastated, to be quite honest, the state it's got into. It's devastating. And I wonder if you mean not just this, but your life. I feel acutely embarrassed when people sort of see my mm. mess. You see, a, a room like this is an interpretation of how you feel. Yes. And what's at the bottom there? What? That's where my office area is. Can we go there? Yeah. Envelopes there, I might need them in the next day or so. Tell me about this room, Alex. I'm recording every day. Unfortunately, these are out of control. Alex spends up to four hours a day recording quizzes, documentaries, and sport. Why is information important for you? I'm wanting to soak up information because I want to put it on the web and write about it. So, what I don't see here at all is nothing personal to you? No, nothing at all. Yeah. For me, sometimes all this is also to hide things, the excessiveness of things are like a blanket yeah. to cover. Some torment. Yeah, it's what we call lack of fulfilment. It's a bit like a, a hole in me yeah. that I'm trying to fill in with stuff, but it never actually gets filled because it's emotional. So you're creating all these stresses that you really, I think you can't cope. Yes, no, You'll have a breakdown in the end, do you know that? Yes, it's got to that sort of point. Alex's hoard isn't just confined to his study. With no space left to accommodate all the clutter, he's moved the overspill outside. And this is where I've got all my newspapers stored. Oh! My, my, I'm stunned. I've never come across anything like it. There's probably 10 to 30,000 newspapers all together. Oh, 30,000 newspapers. How does that make you feel? It's frightening. It is, isn't it? Done. I'm king of the mountain of newspapers. Hoarders 
Hoarders like Alex aren't the only ones who are growing in number. A hoarder's basic problem is that they have so much stuff that it makes their life a total misery. But there is another group of people who might find it almost impossible to say enough collectors. Like hoarders, collectors tend to amass large quantity of stuff. There is even an emotional attachment to the things they collect. But compared to hoarders, collectors take pride and have no shame in displaying or organizing their items. But when a collection becomes so vast that it starts to have an impact on your everyday life, it could be time to get practical help. In Devon, 40-year-old collector Lawrence shares his home with some 30,000 feathered friends. I mainly collect bird ornaments because I really, really like the colours. Lawrence inherited his interest in birds from his parents, Tony and Yvonne. Tony and myself kept birds at one time. We had aviaries in the past. It's not just birds that Alex collects. Also on display are seven and a half thousand thimbles and several hundred decorative glass ornaments. My house is probably more like a museum than an actual house. As you step inside the front room, it is like an Aladdin's cave. With collectibles in the kitchen and boxes in the bath, Lawrence's house no longer functions as a home. He can barely even watch TV. He sleeps there, but that's about as much as he is able to do there. Lawrence's parents have always been protective of him. As he grew up, he had slight speech impediments, so he had to go to speech therapy. We was picked on a lot in school. There was quite a fair bit of bullying because of me and my glasses and uh, my speech at times. Though he's a 40-year-old young man, I suppose I'm Molly Coddle. He's still mummy's boy. As Lawrence's house disappears beneath the scale of his collections, he's become increasingly dependent on his mum and dad in everyday life. Emma, what's with the food tonight? He cannot have showers in his house, he cannot eat in his house, he cannot cook in his house, he can't do nothing in his house. It just has to come to a stop. He's running out of room. Lawrence would be putting ornaments upon his roof. <laughs> At the other end of the country, psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis is trying to help Alex stop accumulating too. He's looking for clues to the trigger for Alex's compulsive hoarding, which has even crept onto the family farm. This is my late father's death, Stelios, from the cloth trade business. Do you have any memories that come back to you? Yes, I can have some flashbacks of my father sat at the desk. When did your father die? He died in 1986, 86. on my birthday. Do you miss him? Yes, I was there at the, at the end. How do you feel about the fact that your father's desk is outside? It's one big stress that would be off my mind if I felt it was safely at home again. This should be in your study. Alex found it very difficult to engage emotionally. So his full dedication now is to things. In the whole day that I spent with him, he never actually once spoke about his family about how he feels about his children, about his daughters, and so forth. It was almost always about practical things that really have no emotional attachment. I think my chances of success in helping Alex are, at this moment in time, quite slim. I don't feel very hopeful about reclaiming the man that I married. I just can't envisage him doing anything really positive about all this mess. But I'd just like to be proved wrong and there'd be nobody happier than me if, uh, if that was the case. In Leeds, 66-year-old Alex is in danger of being overwhelmed by his colossal hoard. Oh, it's taken about 10 years to make this mess. He's asked psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis for help. I think you can't cope. Yes, no, You'll have a cross. breakdown in the end, do you know that? Yes. Alex's obsession with his clutter is isolating him from his wife and children. 
I don't think Alex has got any concept of his effect on his family. I wouldn't say he doesn't care. He can't grasp the concept of his actions on other people. Jackie's lived with her husband's compulsive behaviour for the past 40 years. Stelius wants her to understand the severity of his condition. It is actually a mental health disorder. It's like screaming at somebody who's clinically depressed and saying to them, just snap out of it. You know, they're not going to. A yogurt pot for you and me is like, well, recycling for them, it's like, oh, wow. Could be a million and one things in their mind. Items become equally valuable as humans or emotionally valuable as humans. Right, so he can really, in his mind, the yogurt pot could be more important than me, in a way. At that particular time, in his process, it could be because of how the attachment, the over-attachment of things. Oh, dear. I suppose it does point out how ill he really is. It's a disorder, it's an illness. Yes. I've never really thought of it as a, a mental illness until maybe now. Originally, I always thought he was very eccentric and then very selfish. I do now understand that it is something that's driving him inside to be like this. In Devon, 40-year-old bachelor Lawrence is known as the Birdman. His appetite for collecting means that he's become a regular in local charity shops, searching out bargain bird figurines and glass ornaments. I'm probably one of the best customers in charity shops. Warehouse worker Lawrence spends about half his income on his collection, but there's one thing that continues to elude him. Well, work colleagues sort of say that you've got a load of bird on this, but you haven't actually got a bird of your own. Lawrence would like to settle down, but there is very little room in his life for a companion. And he did actually have a young lady once, and she sort of finished with him as well because she couldn't live here with him. I wouldn't think another person could um, contend with it. Ideally, I would like to meet a girlfriend at the moment. I'm a little bit subconscious of uh, what they'd think of it. It's beginning to get a problem now. You know, he, he does do it beautifully, but it is beginning to get a problem now, I feel. He needs to stop soon <laughs> before it gets any more out of hand. been collecting a few things together to show you. Okay. In Leeds, Stelios wants Alex to reconnect with his feelings. He's asked him to gather some items of emotional significance. Alex has chosen an object that reminds him of his childhood. Were well, there happy times? Yes. There's an absolute ritual that we went to the toy shop and with my father every Saturday. Every Saturday? Yes, and we had to have a toy. I can remember that there were times that we really had to tug him out of his chair to take us. I think it must have been a substitute to sort of being a bit old and a bit too tired to play other things with us. So I wonder, the ritual of buying something every Saturday was a way of unconsciously your parents communicating their love and attention to you, but could, they could never verbally Express it yes. fully. I think it must have been. And I wonder whether you've continued that unconscious process of keeping that connection going with your stuff. It's like a silent cry for, for the attention, for the care of your parent. It's very powerful. Stelios recognises that Alex's compulsion to hoard is so entrenched it's isolating him from his wife and children. This obsessiveness just taken over all his life. Not done anything much together, not done anything exciting, been anywhere, no nice holidays to speak of. 
There's no aspect of it that it doesn't touch. He has probably wasted the last 20 years of his life. The question now is, can Alex look forward to his future? In Devon, Lawrence's collection of 30,000 ornamental birds is getting out of control. His parents are concerned that he won't be able to find a partner and settle down if his home remains overwhelmed by his collection. Professional help is called for. Declutterers Alison and Zoe have spent years tackling domestic devastation. They're visiting Lawrence to assess the scale of his problem. Hello, Lawrence. Hello. Lawrence. Hello. Okay, come in. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You've wow. got some collection mm. here, Lawrence, haven't you? Yes. Yes? How long have you been collecting? About 25, 30 years. Really? Wow. I can see that you're absolutely passionate about what you've got. But the only thing you haven't got in here is a space for yourself. Lawrence's extensive collection has taken over every room and every available surface in his house. Oh, my life! Lawrence, look at all this! Yeah, and this is the majority of my garden birds and thimbles. But, Lawrence, where's your dining room gone? The kitchen's disappearing under ornaments, too. Upstairs, even Lawrence's bedroom has been overtaken by his collection. You've got more ornaments than you've got clothes. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by all? If I'm watching the telly, sometimes the table gets in the way a little bit. I wouldn't be able to concentrate on the television because I'd, all I would see is the symbols and the, the cottages and all that. I wouldn't be able to sleep in here. It's slightly bordering on out of control. I was absolutely astounded at the collection he's got. I think the biggest challenge is, is getting Lawrence to agree to actually part with some of the collections. It doesn't resemble a home anymore. It actually resembles more like a museum. In Leeds, however, Alex isn't yet ready for the declutterers. Stelios believes there's much more work to be done. Halfway through his six-week treatment, Stelios has invited Alex, his wife and daughters, to Oxford for a family therapy session conducted by Dr Alistair Ross. He wants Alex to reconnect emotionally with his family to help motivate him to declutter. Somewhere along the line, there's been this breakdown of communication. You walk in, I'll ask you a question, and by the time I've finished it, is they're putting a videotape in or a disc in, and, I mean, we don't communicate. And on the occasions that we sit and eat together, we have to watch a quiz, and if I speak, it has to be rewound. He's so interested in the contestants, what they are, what they've said, what they do. What their and name yet, is. And yet he's not interested... In you? In, uh, yes. Jackie said something really interesting. I'd like to have a conversation. I'd just like Alex to be able to live a more normal life, to be able to take me out, just to do normal, everyday things. And what I'm hearing uh, your family say to you, Alex, is that this feels like the last straw. Their affection is there, but actually they're worn out. I'm trying to find a way out of it and get some help so I can spend time and I got some ideas from my golfing trips of having some holidays with Jackie. Mm. I'm sensing from your family that they feel abandoned. Yeah. I understand that. It's sort of abandoned by the fact that I'm immersed in all these other things that I'm doing. I think, you know, I think it's a real shame. I think, you know, you could have had an amazing life, but... He still can, I just don't see you live like this for the next 10 years. You know, but you could, you could really turn a corner and, and then really have an amazing time. You've had all the opportunity to have a feeling. Well, that's why I'm here. We're sort of uh, hopefully gradually going to come out of all this mire. <coughs> You know, it's not easy. 
And I think, you know, he doesn't want to be like this, but it's a compulsion, it's a disorder. It's, it's been difficult for him. I'm really grateful that you are taking this on board, because... I'm going to give him a hug. For Alex, it's an emotional milestone. The next step is for him to confront his hoard. In Leeds, Alex's chronic hoarding is not a problem for him alone. Therapy has revealed that it's caused deep distress to his family too. Wife Jackie is hoping that with Stelios' help, Alex can start on the road to recovery. What I would like over the course of the next week, months, however long it takes, him realise how difficult he's made life, not only for us but for himself, and to be able to just walk away from all this big cloud that's in his head and do normal things, because he's not a happy person. Stelios believes Alex may have reached the point where he can take a first small step towards tackling his hoard. He's asked Alex to spend one hour trying to fill a bag with items he now feels able to part with. Ah, right. All wrong as the case may be. It's a painstaking process. My aluminium collection. Much of Alex's hoard is comprised of mementos he intends to write about in his diaries. But for a hoarder as extreme as Alex, anything can qualify as a treasured souvenir. This needs photographing before it's ditched its gaffer tape, that banding I've put round my suitcases when I've been on my trips, and it's just part of the diaries, and then it can go to the go to the tip. I found some sardines I've brought back from America. It's extremely hard for Alex to throw anything away. After an hour's work, from the mountain of clutter in his study, Alex has only one small bag of items he's prepared to recycle. And another bag containing what he's happy to throw away. Um, energy bar, wrapper. In Devon, professional declutterers Alison and Zoe have taken Birdman Lawrence under their wing. His house is so full of ornaments that it ceased to function as a livable home. But Lawrence, where's your dining room gone? To help reclaim his living space, Lawrence has been persuaded to store part of his collection elsewhere. Uh, oh, Lawrence! <laughs> this reminds me of looking in one of those antique shops. But even his garage is filled with collectibles, including over a hundred bird jigsaws. So, Lawrence, am I right in thinking that all these jigsaws that you've got down here are what you're going to lose so that you can bring the ornaments out here? Yeah, it's basically the jigsaws get one of each, like, up into the attic. The hope is that some of the boxes can be permanently removed. Once we start this process, you might find yourself wanting to donate a few jigsaws to a charity or something. I don't know. Alison and Zoe prioritise the decluttering, concentrating first on reorganising the centrepiece of Lawrence's home, the living room. I feel I'm being watched by many, many eyes. I'm sure they're here to support and spy on me by Lawrence. <laughs> it's so cluttered, there's nowhere to move. I don't think I've ever worked somewhere where there's so many fragile items. So because we're in such a tight space, you're walking around like this because you're so frightened that you're going to break something. My feelings are, if this collection you've got isn't priority, remove this, yeah. get some light into this, this beautiful lounge and perhaps just have a, a little display unit there, wouldn't yeah. we? Some of the duplicate jigsaw boxes are stored in the loft. And Lawrence takes the first step towards letting go of some of his treasured collection, donating 40 others to a local nursing home. I'm surprised how Lawrence is. He's, he's, he's incredible, actually. He's really enjoying it, I think. 
Lawrence may seem serene on the surface, but underneath, he isn't quite so calm. I'm sort of a little, well, a little bit panicky, wondering if I'm going to like their ideas um, and how things are going to end up really. miles away in Leeds, Alex is still absorbed by his clutter. His extreme hoarding is driving a wedge between him and his wife. Why haven't I gone and left him? I have thought about it, I must admit, there's been times, but it would all fall on the children. They'd still have him to worry about, and they'd have the brunt of it. With most of his time and energy now spent on his hoard, Alex has all but withdrawn from family life. We're quite a sociable family, Very aren't we? Very sociable. But, um, he's just not yes. part of that anymore. Alex's intense schedule of hoarding doesn't allow for sit-down dinners with Jackie. He usually eats alone in his overalls, recording television programmes. In an attempt to change the pattern, Stelios has organised a cooking therapy session at a restaurant in Birmingham. Last time I managed to have a meal out alone with Jackie was something like about four years ago when we were abroad. Stelios has asked Alex to cook a meal for Jackie. He hopes this will be a first step towards restoring the bond with his wife. One of the things that came up in our family therapy was this longing that Jackie expressed of having a quality time with her husband, having a meal again, going for a walk. So today we've created this and hopefully it'll be a good start for them to have more individual times together. Jackie and I have been married 43 years and I honestly can't remember cooking anything properly for Jackie. I think as far as I've got is turning the oven on and maybe turning something off on the hob. Does Jackie like mushrooms, Alex? Yes, uh, yes, yes uh, certainly, absolutely. Do you think she'll be surprised that you're cooking for her? Might have to have some smelling salt, she might have <laughs> faint. <laughs> Having prepared the main course, Alex applies his newly acquired culinary skills to patisserie, creating a special dessert for Jackie. Try and make a heart shake or something. <laughs> This is a complete new experience that I've never imagined that in a million years would be happening today. Stelios had wanted to reawaken Alex's dormant feelings for his wife, Jackie. This represents a significant breakthrough. In Devon, after two gruelling days of decluttering, Lawrence is ready to show his parents what's been achieved. Okay. Hiya. 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 Wow. What was once a bird museum is now a livable space. Lawrence has finally reclaimed his home and should no longer be so reliant on his mum and dad. You could walk around without knocking things over and having to put your arms to your side and toddle along. It's a home. As well as a comfortable living room, there's a fully functioning kitchen. Hopefully, now that Lawrence has got his kitchen back, he'll be able to do his own cooking, his own washing, and he won't be dependent on Mother so much. My goodness, this was a first an experience, the first, first one you've ever made us in your own house. <laughs> it's lovely. And you can see your stuff better, because it's like showing off now, and it's lovely. Be able to use your gas fire and watch your television downstairs now instead of having to lay on your bed and watch your television. Everything sort of came together and uh, I'm pleased with how it's gone. I'm really proud of you for doing this, Lawrence. It is looking really fantastic. I'll be coming up here every day now and making myself a cup of tea. <laughs> I'll change the locks. I'll change the locks. <laughs> In Birmingham, Jackie has been invited to the restaurant where husband Alex has been learning to cook. She's unsure what to expect. Fancy meeting you here. Uh, you had a good journey. So, so. It's a surprise for you. 
We might have to come upstairs. I'm a bit worried if you've got an apron on. For Alex and Jackie, it's an unusual situation. Yeah, I think you need a drink. You know me only too well. Are you having one? You're not allowed to drink if you're cooking. I'm not so sure. Could be drunk in charge. <clears throat> I'm just a bit worried. He's never cooked anything in his life, ever. Never. <laughs> What's on the menu, Chef? Well, I've made some tagliatelle myself through that machine. Thank you. Bon appétit. Mmm, very tasty. You'll have to give me the recipe. Please, at my first attempt at a proper, proper main course. For the first time in years, Alex has managed to put his wife, Jackie, before his hoard. It stirred up some deep emotions. Oh, we love it, each other. Oh, well done. Well, let's hope we can move on from here and build a few bridges. I was touched, because it's, it's a long time since it's taken the time to sort of sit down and speak to me and say anything. And I suppose I've just become, in a way, hardened to it all. And I sort of walk away from it and shut myself away. But that was very nice, very touched. Maybe there's a bit of hope, you never know. A light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> it's a small step in the right direction. But after 15 years of hoarding, the real test for Alex will be whether or not he can finally overcome his compulsion. Psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis is coming to the end of six weeks of hoarder therapy with Alex, one of his most extreme cases to date. He believes Alex is slowly beginning to re-engage emotionally with his family finally putting his relatives before his rubbish. Stelios thinks there's now potential for Alex to attempt to shed a small portion of his mammoth hoard. We are at a very important stage in Alex's treatment at the moment. He's beginning to feel more, he's beginning to understand more, he's beginning to have more insight into his condition. Even if Alex today is able to get rid of one bag, one box, it's a great victory towards recovery. Setting aside the hordes in the farm, the field, the garage and the car, Stelius wants him to concentrate on his study. Professional declutterers Alison and Zoe have arrived to help. It'd be kid gloves today. We need to gain his trust. We need to know that he thinks we're on his side and that we understand the routine that he wants to fix to because he's very fixated on doing things a certain way. Morning, ladies. Hi. Morning. Hi, I'm Zoe. Come Steve's in, please. Steve's arrived. They've come to your rescue. Right, OK. <laughs> You've brought some life boys with you as well. <laughs> as the declutterers get to work on 15 years of hoarding, they set out the ground rules for a concerned Alex. Times we just want to assure you that you are in charge and that everything will be labelled. You've got a label for me as well. <laughs> but even as his hoard is being cleared, Alex finds the time to add to it, recording yet another DVD for the collection. And it turns out that Alex appears so relaxed because his clutter is not being removed, merely relocated. The plan is most of the contents of the study that needs resorting will stay here, and the rest of it's going down to the farm. Alex has prepared the barn to receive the contents of his study. As far as he's concerned, the declutterers aren't disposing of his hoard. They're sorting it and moving it into storage. He thinks that we're his workers and we're actually going to do what he wants. Our plan is that we're going to go with what he's saying, but we really want to concentrate on the recycling because that's the big issue here. 
Before the declutterers can dispose of anything marked for recycling, Alex insists on combing through it all, piece by piece. He's in control of all of that recycling because he doesn't trust anybody. What about these? What's this in here? It looks like some old um, pea pods. So I've got a... You can just put it in the miscellaneous recycling, the whole thing. The dried pea pods join the thousands of pieces of paper, plastic and cardboard in the lounge. After three hours of hard labour, a first glimpse of the long-lost study is sighted. Yes, I can see a carpet at last. But as the carpet emerges in the study, it's disappearing under a pile of rubbish in the lounge. We're still not losing anything, as in the rubbish, the recyclables. It still has to go through. There's still a reason for this. Reason to keep that. That can't go to that one. That has to go there. It's wearing. With rubbish simply moving from one room to another, Alison and Zoe's patience is running out. I think they're just a little bit worried about how much we're bringing out and how much is in the lounge. It's going to be done. We work with people. Yeah. We don't let you do it on your own. We try to help you because it's all about... Yes, but you are. Yes, but I'm doing it. Uh, I know. Look, I'm getting upset now. I'm really getting oh, upset right, now. Right, Look, okay. I know what I'm doing. I can get all this sorted out and in the, in the thing ready. I want to get my study sorted. You're doing an absolutely fantastic job in there. We're going to get done. If we're all messing around with the same blooming stuff, we're not going to get finished in there. Clearly, it's, it's absolute chaos out there. And we're nearly finishing. We're coming to finish. I don't know how and where, how this is going to end. I really don't. I'm on my way to see Alex today to find out whether he's been able to declutter his study. I'm quite sceptical because uh, I know Alex is one of the most extreme cases I've come across. After yesterday's heated exchange, Alex appears to have turned a corner. Before Stelios arrives, he's finally throwing away some of his rubbish. I've got rid of about 10 bags today. But I'm definitely chuffed with myself because this is something I've actually physically sorted and taken to the recycling. It's a huge step in the right direction for Alex. But is it a case of too little, too late? After six weeks of intensive therapy, Stelios is about to witness the result. In. The door opens oh wide. Word. Four days ago, the study was a chaotic Aladdin's cave of antiques, rubbish and recycling. It was a no-go area for the family and a constant source of stress for Alex. I am stunned. This is just incredible. Isn't uh, it? Incredible. Yeah. Well done. How do you feel walking in now? A huge weight off my shoulders. And your father's desk? Yeah. Gosh, it looks in place here, doesn't it? Now I've got the space. It's absolutely wonderful. If this room had a mouth and could speak to you, what do you think it would say to you now? Oh, I can breathe now. You were suffocating me before. Maybe that's how you felt as well. Well, definitely. You know? And I've seen you put all your lovely pictures of your family. Do you know what's the biggest change for me yes. in this room? When I, when I came, your room, I say if this was your room, had nothing to do with the rest of the house. You were like in exile. A hermit. A hermit. This room now is part of the house, is inside the house. In a way, maybe you are becoming part of the family again. I hope so. It is the biggest change you've achieved, not just moving the one ton of clutter, but actually opening your door and saying to your family, look, I can do it, I've tried my best. You can come back in now. Come in, come in, come in. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
my god, whose house is this? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> oh, what do you think of all this in here? Uh, it really is amazing. I thought there would still be little deposits of things in corners <laughs> and just little piles, but I, I'm just absolutely amazed when I saw how everything's displayed oh, and... Goodness. Amazing. Oh, well done. Very good. <laughs> I'm speechless for once. It's a great achievement, you know, well done. I know we've still got a long way to go, but it's yeah. a fantastic beginning. But how does it feel, you know, to have your family back in here again? Amazing. It is, isn't it? It is amazing. It's a relief. <coughs> oh. It was touching to see the little things, like the photographs, which is what most fathers and husbands do on their office desk. So I felt proud that he had actually got to that stage, that he'd, he'd let it be turned into a functional room, and I hope we can move on from that. Cheers. It, cheers. Well done. Well cheers. done. Cheers. Cheers. Well done to all of you. Cheers. It was beautiful to see the room and Alex becoming part of that family and the house again. It's very important to be realistic about Alex's progress, you know. We know some of the stuff has gone to another place to be stored. We know some stuff has gone to be checked later on, but that's okay. At this moment in time, what Alex has accomplished is a healthy space for him to grow and to heal. And that's the first step to continuing to tackle this disorder.